funniest part, like, I don't, a lot of people don't know, Diddy turned me down. I was 12 years old. Like, let's, let, let, let's, 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 let's talk about him. Early in agenda, I don't know, a lot of people like to point to Jay-Z and say that Jay-Z, you know, he had hand in. Jay-Z is not, you know, he's blocking a lot of opportunities. Your relationship was a business relationship, financial, to get to the top, to be, be to become billionaires. So you know how Hollywood gossip has been buzzing lately. It's like everyone's waiting for the next shoe to drop, especially when it comes to big name celebrities. Well, it seems the latest target is none other than the power couple Beyonce and Jay-Z, with Chris Brown seemingly stirring the pot. But have you ever wondered why Chris Brown's not hitting the same highs as he used to? I mean, sure, he's still putting out tunes and doing his thing, but he's been losing out on opportunities left and right. Brands aren't exactly lining up to work with him anymore. Now, we all know Chris isn't exactly squeaky clean, especially with all the stuff surrounding the Rihanna incident. And yeah, he definitely deserves to be held accountable for that. But here's the thing. Why is he getting the short end of the stick while others, like Dr. Dre, seem to skate by relatively unscathed? I mean, Dre's got a laundry list of accusations against him, but he's still getting accolades like the Dr. Dre Global Impact Award, which was even given to Jay-Z at this year's Grammy Awards. So could there be a power play at work here? Some folks are speculating that Jay-Z might be intentionally sabotaging Chris Brown's career. Maybe it's because of what happened with Rihanna, who, let's not forget, Jay-Z played a huge role in launching her career. Or perhaps there's more to it, like those whispers about Jay-Z and Rihanna having some kind of history. Cast your mind back to 2009 when Chris Brown made headlines for pleading guilty to a wording Rihanna. Brown dropped a bombshell, claiming that Rihanna gave him herpes. According to Brown's 10 million complaint, he alleged that Rihanna knowingly passed on the herpes virus to him and then went to extreme lengths to frame him for the A. Brown's lawsuit painted a picture of Rihanna as the ultimate villain, threatening him with dire consequences if he dared to sue her. Brown claimed he woke up one morning with three blisters down under, sending him into a panic about his health and the risk of infecting others. And he even alleged that he was planning to pop the question to Rihanna and even penned a song, Don't Wake Me Up, for her. But alas, their fairy tale romance came crashing down thanks to the herpes bombshell. Brown's lawsuit also pointed fingers at Rihanna for sabotaging his relationships with other women, all because of the alleged herpes bomb she dropped on him from Barbados, which he deemed lethal. And it didn't stop there. According to a former model who once worked with Rihanna, there's another man out there who allegedly fell victim to her herpes saga. But here's where things take a twist. According to whispers from Jaguar Wright, the real culprit behind Rihanna's alleged herpes saga isn't Brown, but none other than Jay-Z. Rumor has it that Jay-Z's wandering ways led him down a path of infidelity, potentially exposing him to the herpes virus, which he may have then passed on to Rihanna during their alleged rendezvous. Jay-Z gave her the herpes that she gave to Chris Brown. Rihanna was only 14, 15 when he started f***ing with her and signed her to the so, if you're trying to piece together this puzzle, Brown's accusations of Rihanna giving him herpes seem to align with the timeline of when she and Jay-Z were rumored to be romantically involved. Let's take a trip down memory lane to when Rihanna was just a fresh-faced 15-year-old with dreams of making it big in the music business. She catches the eye of record producer Evan Rogers while chilling in Barbados. He's practically floored by her supermodel looks. Think green eyes, neck, and a sense of style. Rogers must have been thinking, if this girl can sing half as good as she looks, we've got a superstar on our hands. Fast forward to 2004 and Rihanna drops her first single, Ponda Replay. The track makes its way into the hands of none other than Def Jam's big boss man himself, Jay-Z. Now here's where the rumors start swirling. Some folks speculate that Jay-Z had his eyes set on Rihanna from the get-go. You know, typical playboy behavior and all that jazz. There's talk that he might have seen Rihanna as more than just a talented protege. Allegedly, he swooped in, took her under his wing, and helped shape her career. But was there more to it than just mentorship? Some whispers in the grapevine suggest that Jay-Z's determination to sign Rihanna to Def Jam was borderline aggressive. Word on the street is he even dropped a line about only having two options, signing the contract or taking a flying leap out the window. Of course, Rihanna went on to sign that contract, kicking off her journey to becoming one of the biggest pop stars of our generation. Under Jay-Z's wing, she churned out hit after hit, from Umbrella to Run This Town, to talk that talk. But here's where things get juicy. Did Jay-Z and Rihanna's relationship extend beyond the studio walls? That's the burning question on everyone's minds. According to J. Randy Tarabarelli, the guy who's always dishing out the dirt on celebs, he hints that there might have been something more between them back in 2005. Rumor has it things got so steamy between them that Jay and Beyonce had to take a timeout from their own relationship for a bit. The idea of Jay-Z and Rihanna getting cozy behind Beyonce's back sounds like something straight out
out of a Hollywood script, doesn't it? Especially considering that back in the day, Beyonce was the one who really helped Rihanna's career take off, and that Beyonce's support reportedly came at a cost for another artist, Tiara Marie. Word has it, Tiara got the boot from Def Jam because Beyonce was supposedly more into Rihanna's vibe. So back in 2005, a young Tiara Mari scored a deal with Jay-Z's Rockefeller Records. She was not just talented, but also stunning, and she was only 17. Under Jay-Z's wing, Tiara dropped Make Her Feel Good from her first album, and it was an instant hit. And what's better than having Jay-Z as your project's dad and being crowned the princess of Def Jam Records? Tiara was living the dream, no doubt. Also, around the same time, you've got a young Rihanna and Nao signing up with Def Jam Records. Now, Tiara Mari was already the official princess of the label, stealing all the attention. Being an immigrant from Barbados, Rihanna was kind in the shadows compared to her more promising label mate. But everything flipped when Queen Bey decided she was vibing more with Rihanna. Suddenly, the label dynamic shifted and Tiara got the boot. L.A. Reid spilled the beans in his memoir, saying that initially, they thought Tiara was the bigger star between her and Rihanna. But Queen Bey stepped in, made them reconsider, and signed Rihanna. Reid said, We had an in-house company showcase and Beyonce happened to be there with Jay-Z, Tiara Marie, Rihanna, a four-girl group called Black Butterfly and Neo performed. At the label, we thought Tiara Marie would be a big star. We spent more time on her, did more work on her, paid more attention to her. A bell went off for me, however, when after the showcase, Beyonce came up to me and said, that Rihanna girl, she's a after a little nudge from Beyonce, the execs decided to give Rihanna a closer look. Fast forward to 2006, and they hit up Tierra Mari with a call, not a fancy letter, just a call, probably made by some staff. And what for? Well, nobody really knows. Imagine getting the boot without a proper heads up from a guy you saw as a father figure. Tierra spilled the tea, saying Jay-Z himself never bothered to give her the news. She said, Jay-Z didn't call me to tell me bye-bye. If things played out differently, Tierra could have been today's Rihanna, or a big Tierra, considering her undeniable talent. But alas, her peak fame window was from 2005 to 2006. Since that day, and Beyonce's say-so, she's been hustling as a struggling artist with just one hit to her name. And then there's the whole Diddy angle. Chris Brown spilled the beans about almost signing with Bad Boy Records, but supposedly Diddy turned him down because he wouldn't play ball with whatever shady stuff was going on behind the scenes. And we all know how tight Diddy and Jay-Z are. So yeah, maybe all this drama is why Chris Brown's career seems to be spiraling downward. But it's not just Chris Brown who supposedly got some beef with the Carters. There's talk floating around town that they've rubbed elbows with more than a few other folks too. There's also Blue Contrell. Back in the early 2000s, she was a big name in R&B, giving Beyonce a run for her money. Tracks like Hit Em Up Style and Breathe were climbing charts everywhere. Blue was on fire, but here's the kicker. After years of rocking the scene, she vanished from the public eye. Where'd she go? Given her obvious talent, record labels were practically fighting over her. Eventually, Blue decided to roll with Arista Records. Records. She dropped her first single, Hit Em Up Style, in April 2001, and it blew up, like seriously blew up. The song not only snagged the number two spot on the Billboard Hot 100, but also scored her a Grammy nom for Best Female R and B Vocal Performance. Blue Cantrell was riding the wave of success back then. In the same year, her debut album, So Blue, went platinum, and things kept looking up till 2003 when she dropped her second album, Bittersweet. That one included the hit Breathe featuring Sean Paul, earning her a second Grammy nom, this time for Best R&B Album. Now, here's where it gets interesting. Amid all her achievements, Blue had these persistent rumors flying around, saying she was in some intense feud with Beyonce. Now, Beyonce was just kicking off her solo career with Dangerously In Love, and she was in the early days of her thing with Jay-Z. Blue, on the other hand, was tight with Jay and dropping R&B chart toppers around the same time. You can guess how the gossip started. Whenever folks asked Blue about her and Jay-Z, she always shot it down, saying there was nothing going on. Although she did spill the beans to Wendy Williams once, admitting she had a big crush on him. She said, I still have a crush on him now. She spilled, I don't care who he's dating, I always had a crush on him. It seemed Beyonce wasn't too thrilled about Blue having a thing for her man Jay-Z, and Blue didn't exactly pour cold water on the feud. Things got even spicier when she pointed out similarities between her songs and Beyonce's. In an interview with The Guardian, she mentioned how the music video for Beyonce and Jay-Z's Bonnie and Clyde seemed a lot like the promo for her song Round Up, which came out first.
and Beyonce? Well, she threw some fuel on the fire, too. In the song Signs, she drops this line about being in love with a Sagittarius, Jay-Z, and being hurt by a Pisces, Blue. This didn't sit well with Blue, and she said, maybe she's trying to do it to get press, but I want to make her understand if she goes there with me, it's the wrong move. She needs to understand what she's doing and what she's getting into. I'm a master at singing. Oh, but the drama didn't stop there. Blue Cantrell wasn't letting Beyonce off the hook. After catching wind of the whispers, she fired back, accusing Beyonce of ripping her off. The heat got turned up when Blue heard Beyonce's single Baby Boy and thought it was way too similar to her own chart-topping hit, Breathe. Both tunes were edgy R and B jams featuring Sean Paul, and Blue wasn't having it. She straight up complained about it, saying, Beyonce is talented and beautiful, and I'm a fan, but she has a song out which is very similar to mine. She uses words that are in the hook of my song, and if she's that talented, she shouldn't have to copy someone else. Her song Baby Boy has the exact word, breathe in the hook. She continued her rant saying, she's ripping me off, but there is no animosity because I'm a very positive person. However, I'm a little disappointed because she is established and didn't have to do that, but she won't get away with plagiarizing me because I'm a number one artist. So here's the wild turn in the story. It wasn't long after the feud, according to TMZ, Blue Cantrell had this bizarre episode. They reported she was running through the streets in Santa Monica, ranting about people trying to her. The whole thing went down around 2 a.m., and witnesses said she was going on about someone giving her poisonous gas. It got so intense that someone had to call the cops. When the officers showed up, Blue pulled the, do you know who I am, card and even referred to herself as a one-hit wonder. The cops decided to take her to a nearby hospital for a checkup. After that incident, it's like Blue vanished into thin air, while Beyonce just kept on slaying with her tours. And then, there's the Jay-Z and Foxy Brown saga. They crossed paths when Foxy was just 15, and Jay Z was 27. Yeah, sounds a bit sketchy, right? Later on, Foxy signed up with Def Jam, and that's when the rumors started swirling about some romantic thing between her and Jay Z. But hold up, Foxy's shutting that down, saying it's all about the music, nothing else. Still, a 27-year-old dude rolling with a 15-year-old girl? That's got people raising eyebrows for sure. Jay-Z kept bringing Foxy on stage during his tours while she was still in her teens, giving off major deja vu vibes from the Aaliyah and R. Kelly drama. Always seen together, hitting the same parties, you know the drill. People couldn't help but wonder if there was more to Jay and Foxy's connection than meets the eye. All right, let's rewind to 96 when Foxy Brown and Jay-Z dropped Ain't No N, sparking the beginning of their musical duo. This track was wasn't just a hit, it was like fireworks exploding, showcasing the crazy chemistry between these two. Foxy brought the fire with her fearless lyrics, perfectly blending with Jay-Z's smooth and powerful vibe. It wasn't just a career boost, it laid the foundation for their tag team brilliance. In 97, they hit us with I'll Be, solidifying their status as a rap dream team. The magic between Foxy and Jay-Z was undeniable, creating this killer combo of lyrics, beats, and a shared passion for their craft. They were cooking up something special, and the world was vibing with it big time. But then, things take a turning point in Foxy's career. So, she was all set to drop Black Roses. But then, bam, hearing loss threw a curveball. The album got shelved and her career got a big old question mark. Whispers started about Jay-Z not vibing with how things were going, hinting at a possible label detour. The Black Roses hype eventually got canceled, shaking up their collaboration journey. Fast forward to May 2007, and Black Hand Entertainment steps up. They're managing Foxy Brown now, with Chaz Williams leading the charge. But plot twist, the release date for Black Roses was still MIA. Come August 16, 2007, and it's official. Foxy's waving goodbye to Def Jam, gearing up for her indie record label, Black Rose Entertainment, with Coke Records handling distribution. Big career pivot, right? A fresh path for her artistic vision. Unfortunately, though, things took a bit of a nosedive. Now, the big question is, why did her career take a nosedive despite having Jay-Z in her corner? She's super talented, and she's always spoken highly of Jay. You'd think he would have pulled some strings to keep her in the game, right? It's not surprising that many folks believe that after Jay was done with Foxy, he just let her fade into the background. Rumors are that as Foxy started growing up, getting wiser, and realized how messed up her relationship with Jay-Z was, she no longer felt cool being Jay-Z's little secret playpen. That's when things went south. Jay-Z not only ended things with her personally, but also professionally. He stopped collaborating with her. And to add insult to injury, he blacklisted her in the industry. But wait, guys, Things are taking a dark turn. A former bodyguard, Uncle Ron, has gone all out on TikTok, dropping some wild allegations about the power couple. Now, who's this Uncle Ron guy, you ask? He used to be a bodyguard for a bunch of celebs, and there are some pics floating around of him with Beyonce, but the deets on their personal relationship are a bit hazy. Anyhow, he's making some bold claims, like saying Jay-Z and Beyonce secretly schemed to 
mess up R&B artist Carrie Hilson's career after she said something about Queen Bay. Then, he hits with the bombshell. He's claiming Jay-Z's been controlling Beyonce for years, saying their relationship is more business than romance. Your relationship was a business relationship, financial, to get to the top, to be, be to become billionaires. Man. Yeah, Beyonce's on drugs. She been on them for a long time and you keep her that way. Now, he didn't really come with the receipts, just a bunch of words. However, if it was just him spinning this tale about Beyonce being on you might brush it off. But guess what? He's not flying solo on this one. Cultural commentator Jaguar Wright jumped into the mix, straight up calling Jay-Z a monster who's got Beyonce up to control her. He's a monster. I waited a long time to see if he would grow a conscience. And the more he pumps down his wife's throat. I tell you this right now, y'all talking about free Y'all need to be doing a, a campaign that say free Beyonce. Uh, the Beyonce is free. She is Gilda Cage Ooh. is not, she is not her husband's wife. She is his employee. It's a business arrangement. She was a dowry. Now I gotta say, some fans have got some PTSD from the whole Britney situation, where celebrities end up with everyone and their cousin controlling their lives. And to add a twist to the plot, there's this viral clip of Beyonce looking kinda dead-eyed and swaying at a basketball game with Jay-Z. People were throwing around ideas that she might be on something or just super exhausted. The swaying wasn't exactly a good look. Maybe it's some kind of who knows. With all these juicy allegations flying around, it feels like more big name celebs might be in for a reckoning sooner than we expected. But I'm curious to hear what you guys make of all this drama. Drop your thoughts in the comments below and we'll catch you in the next video.